I want to show by induction that this formula is true. This is called a binomial theorem. This is a major result. Now in order to show this by induction, I need to verify that it holds for when n is equal to 1. And when I've done that, then I want to show that whenever it is true for n, it will also be true for n plus 1. So I let n equal to 1. When I do that, the left hand side is just x plus y. The right hand side would be 1 over 0 times x to the 1 minus 0 y to the 0 plus and then 1 over 1 times x to the 0 y to the 1. Now I know that 1 over 0 and 1 over 1 by definition are equal to 1. And also by convention when y and x are not 0 which we will assume is the case here since it isn't very interesting otherwise. When you have a non-zero number raised to the zeroth power by convention that is always 1. And so this reduces to x plus y. And so you see I get the same thing on both sides of the equation. So the formula holds if n is equal to 1. So now we will assume assume the formula it holds for n. Then if I place an n plus 1 wherever I see an n on in the sum here, I need to verify that I get x plus y to the n plus 1. Well, here it is. I will take out the top term and the bottom term. The top term is x to the n plus 1. The bottom term, when k equal to 0, is just, uh, let's see, well the bottom term is x to the n plus 1. The top term is y to the n plus 1. All right, so I take those two out and then I have what's left, the sum from 1 up to n of this expression here. And at this point, we're going to use that important identity for the binomial coefficients. So I'm replacing this binomial coefficient, n plus 1 over k, with n over k plus n over k minus 1. And now I will split the sum across this plus sign and write it like that. Well, the next step is to change the index of summation in this sum here. Wherever I see a k, I'm going to put a k plus 1. And therefore, I have to start the new k at 0 and end at n minus 1. So this sum here is the same as that. And then I'm going to use the induction hypothesis. You see, if this sum here, and by the way, you notice how I factored out an x. There it is, see? So I had an x to the n plus 1, it became an x to the n minus k instead of this one. And then over here, I, I'm also going to do something similar. I'm going to factor out a y because when I replace the k with a k plus 1, I'll just take that extra y out here. Now look, these sums here look just the way they ought to, to use the induction hypothesis, except it would need to start at 0 and this one would need to end at n. So what I'll do is just start the sum at 0, use the induction hypothesis, and that gives me x plus y to the n. Then I subtract off the term that I, um, that I added in, which is the term when uh, k is equal to 0, which is just an x to the n. And over here, I'm doing something similar, an x plus y to the n minus this last term, which is a y to the n. So now, you notice if you take x times this and x times this, you're going to get a negative x to the n plus 1, which will cancel with this x to the n plus 1. And similarly here, this negative y to the n plus 1, this one times this one, cancels with this one. And so you end up with this, and you can factor out the x plus y to the n from both terms and obtain the desired result. So you see, that proves the theorem by induction.